Hello everybody and welcome to Pisa Presents on Iron Ore Minerals. So today we're just going to be looking at several minerals that can serve as ores of iron or really several iron minerals that may be of special interest. Now first of all, what is an ore? Well basically it's a rock or some sort of geologic substance that contains a particular mineral of economic interest. Now, in the case of iron, what constitutes economic interest? Well, if it's about 60% iron or higher, any lower of a basically a concentration, and it's just not really economically feasible to be mining it. It just doesn't make the money sense. Now, due to oxidation, iron is rarely found on the Earth's surface, hence digging in very deep mines like this iron mine right here. Now, altogether, Earth is 35% iron, which is staggeringly amazing. But really, when you think about it, it's that high of a percentage for one key reason, Earth's core, which is basically iron. Now, altogether, you may be wondering the other major components of Earth is oxygen at 30%, and then silicon is 15%, and then we round it up with magnesium at 13%. So today we're gonna to be looking at these six minerals right here, or more so mineral groups in the case of one. Now, first of all, you may be also wondering, well, what about meteorites? Aren't a lot of meteorites iron? This one right here is a very famous meteorite, and yes, it is an iron meteorite. Whoop, oh boy, and there they go, right there, the little rascal. So now, the thing is, iron meteorites aren't even anywhere close to the majority of meteorites that have been found. Only about 6 or 7% of meteorites are literally iron ones. The rest are what are called stony meteorites. So why do the iron ones get so much credit? Because in some sources, people will say that the majority of iron on Earth comes from meteorites. No, that's not true. It comes from the iron minerals and other related deposits. Now, this can basically be boiled down to a term from paleontology and also really history in, in general as survivorship bias. Now, first of all, iron minerals are a lot easier to find than regular stony uh, meteorites, sorry. They're more recognizable. I mean, let's face it, people like shiny things. So you walk along, you see something that's a meteorite, and if it's made out of iron, it's shiny, it's attractive, your eyes are drawn to it. Also too, holy crap, this thing's heavy. So they're a lot more resistant to damage in that aspect, and just in general, people like them more. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at this one right here, which is 63% iron, this is Gertite. No, it is not Goethite. This is not Shakespeare in the park, folks. It's, please, it is Gertite. Now, here is a specimen of it right there. This is one of my favorite ones. I just love that botroidal look to it right there, kind of like that blobby shape. Now, it is found in 12 counties in Pennsylvania, including by our very own show, Mineral Fest. It has an orthrhombic crystal system. Its hardness is five to five and a half. Specific gravity of 4.27 to 4.29. And a couple of little interesting tidbits about it is, is that it's very common. It's from weathering and can also be a source of bog iron. Now here is another specimen right there. If you kind of look at the 10 o'clock spot, you can see almost needle-like crystals of the gertite just there in that geode. Now, why can't I ever find anything like that? Here is also two iridescent gertite from Spain. Now, next we're gonna be looking at hematite, which is 70% iron. Now, hema is a word that basically, it's the same root word for blood, like hematology, and that's where hematite gets its name from, from that sort of the reddish brown color that it has. It has trigonal crystal system, hardness of five to six, Specific gravity, 5.26. And really neat thing about hematite is that it is quite possibly the first mineral ever named. So, I mean, every science has to start somewhere, right? Well, hematite is basically where mineralogy started. Now, in terms of being found locally to the club, it's found mostly in eastern Pennsylvania. 
at a lot of localities that we've gone to, like, say, Bachman and Mine and C.K. Williams, among others. This is hematite from the Gotthard Pass in Switzerland. Now, that is hematite under a scanning electron microscope. Its magnification is 100 times, and that just really gives you an idea of how intricate and fine these crystals can be. I mean, it's absolutely staggeringly lovely. Now, limonite is not an actual mineral species. You can see in the formula there, it'll say NH2O. Whenever you see N in something in a, a mineral formula, that basically means that various things can substitute for it. Now, limonite is an as of yet unidentified massive yellowish hydroxide or oxide of iron. It's kind of a generic term for things. Now, what is originally worded as that has been found to be usually gertite, but it can also be hematite, lipidocrokite, or even magnemite. That right there is actually basically a cave of it, stalactites. Famously, we're also going to look at magnetite, magnetite being one of the most, probably, arguably, one of the more famous iron minerals, mainly for its ability to, well, <laughs> be magnetic. So it has octahedral crystals, a hardness of 5.5 to 6.5, specific gravity of 5.175, and in some older sources, you may see it called lodestone. Magnetite is mostly in southeast Pennsylvania, but my personal favorite locality is in New Jersey. There's actually not very far away from me. Now, don't go digging here, please. You're not supposed to. It's Everything is closed off. You're not supposed to go into where the actual shafts are. But back in the day, there was something called the Swayze Mine, as in Patrick Swayze's family actually ran it, you know, the late actor. His ancestors, more or less, were involved in this mine in New Jersey that mines magnetite ore. And so if you go around, sometimes uh, scout groups are given permission to go around there and actually collect. But because the shafts are so deep, they don't want people doing it. So again, don't go there. You can walk around, please, and see how pretty it is. But please don't go collecting for minerals. Now, that right there is a magnetite mine, and that gives you an idea of just the absolute just scope that they have to dig, how far they have to go down to get some of these minerals. Pyrite is FES2. Now, at 47%, this is not an iron ore, but along with magnetite, it's probably the most publicly famous iron mineral, so we couldn't just not include it. Plus, also, too, I mean... Come on, it's the most common sulfide mineral, and it's freaking fool's gold. You gotta, you gotta love it. Now, pyrite, pyro, fire, it got its name because if you hit it, it can emit sparks. That's how it got its name. It has isometric crystals, famously, basically those very cubic ones. A hardness of 6 to 6.5, specific gravity of 4.8 to 5. Now, this is a very, very famous pyrite locality in Spain. This, I, I wow, that almost doesn't look real. That's just so absolutely incredible. Now, here is just to show that not all specimens can come looking like that, but they still look really, really neat. Now, pyrite can also form in soft tissue of fossils as the fossilization process is undergoing. So here are some pyrotized, actually, ammonites. Now, this is a sad side effect of pyrite. This is actually acid mine runoff right there. The reactions from the iron and the sulfur can have very adverse effects on the environment, which is something that people are obviously looking into, finding new ways to mitigate today even. Now, ciderite is also carbon. Now, this is 48% iron, but it's something that's mentioned a lot in some texts, so that's why I included it. Now, it is more evenly spaced throughout Pennsylvania, which is another reason I put it in. It's something that you can find relatively easily with locally a nice site for it being Rittenhouse Gap Quarry. Has a hardness of three and a half to four and a half. Specific gravity of 3.96. Now, because it's a carbonate iron ore, that makes it a lot more difficult to smell. It's more or less you're dealing with a lot more 
sort of parts to the equation in terms of smelting, getting out that iron and making it processable, which is why people don't really use it that much. Now, but still, that is an absolutely lovely piece of ciderite right there. Now, thank you very much for joining us folks today. Now, have a lovely time and go out there and find yourself some minerals. Bye.